taking an opportunity to say to Khan, <laughs> got one over you, buddy. Okay, morning everyone. Uh, arrived at the sanctuary. Uh, it is a nice, cool winter's morning. If this is what winter's like, I'll gladly you know, take it. And however, the lions and the leopards and the hyenas really, really enjoy the cold weather because it um, perks them up, makes them a bit frisky, and uh, which is really great to see another side of them. But today I thought I'm going to mix it up a, a, a bit. Um, we are going to be doing the next installment of the Meet the Characters. And I thought, um, let me introduce you to Duke and Khan, the two black leopards. They seem to be quite the hit on uh, the channel. Uh, really, really surprising. Uh, the videos of their, uh, the last video I did with them did very, very well. So I uh, hope you enjoy this uh, installment. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a nice one. It's going to be an interesting one. So please do stick around. Okay, so we've just arrived at Duke and Khan's. Um, this is the area. Leopards have a slightly different area to the lions and the hyenas. We try and give them more trees, um, more cover, um, a lot of little dense, thick areas. Here comes one of them, I think it's Duke. <coughs> running up, running up to say hello today. Hello, my boy. Eww. Hello, my boy. Let's go. Wow. This is actually Khan. He's um, a little bit bigger than Duke. He is initially the more friendly of the two. So he will always come up first and uh, get your affection and your greeting. You know that soon after you're going to have Duke coming. Um, he takes his time normally. Um, it's not to say he's not a friendly chappy. Uh, Duke's also, you'll see now, Duke's a really wonderful cat. Please don't lick the lens, because then I've got to clean it. <laughs> and there's old, there's old Duke. So we'll let him uh, come up. And that's a typical, <laughs> a typical Duke behavior. <laughs> so that, that is Duke's absolute uh, favorite pastime. He will sit behind the fence or behind a wall or behind a bush. He will stalk you and then he'll come running, running, running up to you. Um, sometimes jump on you or sometimes just then knock you on your legs. And uh, yeah, that's just his way of saying hello and greeting. All right, so Duke in the front, Khan at the back. So one of the questions that people ask is how on earth do uh, these leopards um, tolerate each other? They're males, I mean, and even, even brothers um, will eventually in the wild um, not tolerate each other. Certainly when they reach a certain age, their mother's going to start to say to them, hey guys, it's time for you to go and find a territory of your own. Um, and then they will kind of find the um, the um, place in the wilderness. Um, normally, they might have to um, wander quite a fair distance to find their own uh, area. Um, and the two brothers actually would then become competitors. So it's not like a lion pride where the two brothers would form a coalition. As I said, being an asocial creature. <laughs> ah, it's my camera. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> That's typical leopard behavior too, is I want something and I'm going to get it. And he's looking now at my camera and he's not allowed to get my camera. He's kind of lost interest, so he's lost interest in the, the camera. Leopards um, in the wild would obviously form um, a territory that they would then patrol and mark and protect. There he's actually scent marking, if we can see it. Why is it then in captivity do the brothers tolerate each other like they do? In some cases in the wild, the um, father or the brother will tolerate their, their offspring in their territories, much more so than they would a, a foreign male. And what we found here in the enclosure is that these two have um, an area of, of neutral territory. 
So they've got an area whereby they both can wander in and they both can hang out together. And then we have a area of, of non-neutral territory, which is uh, their own exclusive territory. So we're now here with Khan, um, and he's slightly, slightly different, um, like with uh, the possessiveness of the camera. So you can actually just have the camera around him more than you can with Duke. So in the territory, they're going to have these, these two uh, kinds of areas. So one is going to be a area that they're tolerant of each other in, and that certainly is the uh, place where they go and get water. What they do do is they split it up into uh, um, a kind of an area that they claim as their own. Then they patrol that area. And a lot of people are asking me, so guys, why don't you rotate the leopards as much as we do the lions? And we do rotate the leopards, but they don't like to be rotated. What you always got to bear in mind is you're doing these rotations and you're moving animals to um, enrich their lives. What happens with these cats is if you load them and you move them too frequently, there's so much fighting um, in the territory to claim area um, because once you bring them back to an area where they haven't been before, they see that as neutral uh, territory and then they kind of fight for uh, their right to have an area within that territory. And we find that as they've got older, so when they were younger, they were a lot uh, easier to rotate and mix. But now as they've got older, they're nine years old, um, mature male leopards, they are less tolerant. And actually what happens is they fight quite a bit. And the, the, the fighting and the scrapping is not really nice. They're not aiming to kill each other, but they're aiming to dominate. We've taken that into consideration and certainly with the leopards now, a lot, a, a, not the camera, not the camera, not the camera. We try to, um, we try to take that into consideration and we, uh, you know, we, we see how they are and how they're feeling. Believe it or not, they do actually indicate to you um, their moods. I think he looks like a happy cat, certainly. That behavior there is playful, but what he is doing and he is showing me, like his brother, that he's finding my camera really, really fascinating. Um, and uh, so he is just waiting for me to make a slip up and then he's going to steal my camera. <laughs> that is my pants. No. No. <laughs> Naughty. Naughty con. Yes. There, there's a Duke. I don't know if you can see him. Um, stalking, doing the normal duke behavior. Sneaky. Yeah, sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. You can see certainly they are behaving very well, but I can see that little naughty, I can see that naughty look. <laughs> he wants to grab this camera. Duke is a little bit more um, he, 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 he can be, he's not as affectionate initially as Khan. Khan will always come up to me and uh, kind of lick you and, and always, you know, Duke sometimes won't come up. So the leopards generally like to lick a lot. And uh, the reason for that is there's obviously uh, um, salts and sweat on your on your skin and dry skin cells they're not licking like a dog because it loves you um, there's a purpose so i'm just going to head out and then i'm going to call them and then you're going to see the feeding frenzy of the amazing pulchards okay can be a nice messy job I tell you, you never can get tired of these two. There's always something new. Okay. They're both waiting there. The reason for it is it's neutral. What I'll do is I'm gonna just spill a bit there. The guys are crazy. Okay, while they're eating, guys, while they're eating, I'm just going to sneak out and give them another tin. A lot of you are now going to be watching this video going, 
why pilchards many 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 years ago this this was uh, in the days when Colin Nikita was still youngish their condition wasn't great in terms of uh, you know uh, back then there weren't all these predator supplements that we could give the animals these are relatively new the predator powder in captivity there was always the thinking process that ah oh, you must give them this nice um, juicy fresh muscle meat what one fails to realize is that the muscle meat is lacking in so many of the vitamins and minerals. In the wild, what's the leopard going to eat? Uh, vitamin and nutrient rich uh, innards, uh, liver, kidneys, um, you know, heart, lungs, all of that, they'll eat that. And then they only go on to eating the, you know, bits of the muscle meat. Nature has really uh, perfected this, I'll say. So here we come along as humans, we're keeping these animals in captivity. Cows and horses, pigs, sheep, goats, whatever, yeah. they don't really eat it when it is um, a little bit old and cold. It tends to break down and go rancid very, very quickly. So one day I was at the shops, I thought, you know what, let me give tin pilchards a, a, a go. And lo and behold, the only pilchards that they had were, were um, pilchards in tomato sauce. <laughs> Just trying to lick the can. I washed all the tomato sauce off the pilchards and I gave it to them and they scoffed them down and I thought wow then next it is when I, I next went to the shops and I saw that they had now cases of pilchards in brine not tomato sauce I thought okay right and I bought it I came back all excited and I opened the can and I went in and I showed it to Cole and Nikita and they they, they looked at me and they licked the, the fish uh, with long teeth and a really unamused look on their faces you know turned their noses up and wouldn't eat it cut a long story short it was the tomato sauce that these pilchards are uh, kept in every single animal has their own unique little thing that they like you know some of the animals are liking the citronella spray others like their little treats like the pilchards i have some lions at the moment that we'll get to that absolutely go crazy for boiled eggs Hope you enjoy the video if you do uh, please do share share this video with uh, all your friends and family if you subscribe to Lion Whisperer TV thank you so much really appreciate it it's because of your your subscriptions um, especially the members subscriptions that enables us to uh, continue to create content to um, continue to create awareness so if you do enjoy these videos please do subscribe um, or even become a member we just um, love the fact that the the following is getting uh, greater it's getting bigger um, the word is spreading and I think if we can spread the, the message far and wide um, it can only benefit uh, these animals both in captivity and in the wild so thanks for watching and until next time bye